Oppo is on the move, gaining popularity in its home market and taking advantage of Huawei's current situation over here. And it's now undoubtedly one of the top challengers to Apple and Samsung's dominance. Its latest flagship, its Find X3 Pro, is seeking to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of the S21 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, with its big premium features and its big premium price. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint and this is our review of the Oppo Find X3 Pro. And while you're here, if you could tickle that like button, hit subscribe and tap the notification bell, that would be just terrific. For the past few years, we've seen smartphone makers all use the same old tired design. And for 2021 so far, thankfully, we're seeing some new takes. Samsung kicked things off with its odd but purposeful camera hump that wrapped around the edge of the phone to form a more deliberate part of the design, and now Oppo with arguably a more refined finish. The company says it took 2,000 attempts to get this right and nearly gave up on the idea, but the effect is really unique. Rather than have a separate protrusion, Oppo made the camera housing part of the same piece of glass as the rest of the back, forming this completely seamless curve up to the square that holds all the cameras. It's a lot more subtle and refined than just having a rectangle sticking out the back of the phone, and looks unlike anything else currently on the market. It's really lovely to look at, although the camera arrangement definitely has some iPhone-y vibes. The rest of the back is one smooth surface, with gradual curves towards the edges, while this blue model features that lovely frosted soft glass finish, and it's really nice to feel in your hand, under your fingers. The branding is very minimal too, almost completely ignorable, giving this phone a look and feel that's highly polished and befitting of its luxury price tag. It's slimmer than its predecessor, the Find X2 Pro. It's more than a millimetre thinner than the vegan leather model and noticeably lighter too. Although there's no denying it's still quite a large phone. It doesn't have the bulk or weight of the S21 Ultra though and by comparison is slim and sleek. It's skinny bezels all the way around on the front too and nothing cuts into that display except for a small selfie camera punched into the top corner. Aligning itself slightly with recent trends, the curves around the edges of the display have become smaller and less extreme but are very much still there. It seems like that trend of waterfall design sort of ended before it really started. The rounded corners of the screen don't quite match up with the phone corners, but it's not too bad in that regard. Another positive is Oppo has built in some powerful stereo speakers, so if your phone is close enough to your face, you get that full left and right channel effect when you're watching movies or listening to music. The loudspeaker at the bottom is definitely the louder of the two though, and is quite easy to cover when you're gaming or watching movies in landscape leaving you with sort of a quiet tinny sound coming out of the earpiece speaker. Now Oppo has made something of a name for itself putting fantastic screens on phones this past couple of years, and for 2021 that's no different. With a resolution of 3216 by 1400 and 120Hz refresh rates, it's not only one of the sharpest screens on the planet, but it's fast too. And if that wasn't enough, it can display up to a billion colours. It's HDR10 Plus compatible and has a peak brightness of 1300 nits. The display spec sheet is enough to make any tech nerd's mouth water, and in reality, it's great too. It's bright, it's sharp, it's dynamic, and colours are rich. It sets a full HD resolution by default, but it's really easy to change to QHD. Now, while Oppo's Color OS software is great in a lot of ways, for instance, I really like the Relax app that helps me get to sleep at night playing some calming ambient noise, and I like the customization options available for the interface and the always on display. But there are some quirks, mainly around notifications. There doesn't seem to be a lot of consistency in how they're handled. For instance, I could have a little icon showing me that I have a notification on the always on display, but not on the lock screen. Or a little red dot on the app icon, but nothing showing up in the status bar or notification shade when I drop it down. It's unusual to say the least, and something that perhaps needs fixing. And this was with me checking and double checking and triple checking that I'd gone into the notification settings and made sure everything was switched on, and that all apps were not battery saving. Now as far as pure power goes, the Find X3 Pro is up there with the best of them, and features the newest member of the Snapdragon 800 series processors. That means you get the Snapdragon 888, and with both 12GB of RAM and 250GB of storage, there's plenty of memory too. Load up your favourite games and the phone handles them without breaking a sweat, keeping up with fast animations and transitions. It doesn't stutter or lag anywhere, so it really doesn't matter what you try to do with it, it'll handle it just fine. And I didn't even notice it get particularly warm, even after a 30 minute gaming session. Although the top right corner of the frame did get a tiny bit warm after a while. 
but it never became uncomfortable to hold. Battery management is similarly efficient. I have to say I struggled to drain the full battery in a single day once. Even at the weekend with three hours of gaming and then some camera testing, I still finished one day with 30% left over. And with my own specific use case, I have no doubt that this could easily be a two day phone for me. I don't know how, I assume magic. Then when it does eventually empty, it's got Oppo's trademark flash charging technology in both wired and wireless form. With the wired adapter, it can full refill in under 40 minutes. With the proprietary AirVook tech, which OnePlus also uses in its wireless warp charge stand, you can fill it up pretty quickly with a wireless charger too. So where to start with the camera? I think probably with the gimmick first, because it's fun. In its quad camera system, it has this so-called micro lens. It gives you the effect of zooming in up to 60 times and has its own little LED ring light around it because it's for shooting objects that are really, really close up, allowing you to see detail you just can't with the naked eye. Launch the microscope mode in the camera and a curtain goes from looking like this to being able to see the individual threads and the weaves in the construction. It's a similar effect with weaved nylon watch straps or a cloth bound book. Hold it to a screen and you'll see the sub pixels in the panel. It's really pretty cool. Yes, it's a gimmick and with a low three megapixel resolution, it's not particularly sharp either, but it is fun and definitely adds a different edge to your photography. As for the others, it's pretty much all good here too. The wide and ultra wide camera use the same 50 megapixel Sony sensor, so the balance of color, dynamic range and detail is pretty much identical between the two. And that makes the photos taken from both of them seem consistent with each other, which isn't always the case with a lot of phones. The ultra wide also acts as a macro lens, which automatically launches when you get close enough to an object. The only downside being if you're shooting in one times mode, it of course switches lenses to the ultra wide one and then changes your framing so you have to adjust and get the right parts lined up again. Details and color do look good in macro mode though, and that can't be said for a lot of dedicated macro lenses out there. Even in low light and in night mode, it performs really well, even when compared to the likes of the iPhone 12 and the Pixel 5. Results were pretty good. They did seem warmer than the other two phones, but definitely not as harsh and contrast heavy as the iPhone results. In fact, results in daylight conditions sometimes came out looking quite warm too. There's even a night mode for video, which boosts the brightness levels incredibly when you're shooting in the dark. Although results from this tend to look a bit oversaturated and a bit hyper real. You also lose most of the benefits of any stabilization that the camera has. So you may find you might just want to put on the stabilization, lose a bit of brightness and then boost it in the edit afterwards. The 13 megapixel telephoto lens for zooming is useful to have and has five times hybrid zoom and two times optical. Although you can go all the way up to 20 times, but at that level, the pictures sort of break down a bit, introducing quite a lot of noise and losing sharpness. So the Oppo Find X3 Pro is a top flagship and it acts like one and offers pretty much anything you would expect from one. Because when it comes down to display or battery life or speed or even the cameras, it's undoubtedly one of the best phones on the market right now and likely will be a strong choice going forwards throughout 2021. It is a stunning phone in pretty much every way. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media. You can follow me on there if you want to. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you want to catch all the rest of the videos we produce, please do hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell to make sure you get a notification. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.